Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, we're gonna cover how do you create a Tableau extract in Tableau? What is a Tableau extract? Why should you care about it? And what are some of the options that you have when you're creating one of these? Uh, so let's go ahead and, and dive into it. Um, so first up, what is an extract and why should you care? Uh, so a Tableau extract is a file type that you can create. Uh, you can create it in Tableau Desktop. You can actually uh, create it as an output type in Tableau Prep. It is a local file that takes a data source and sort of compresses and optimizes it for use in Tableau. Um, typically, it's the most efficient way to be able to query data. Like a, the way that I've heard it explained is it's, it's like taking data and translating it into Tableau's local language and, and creating a local copy. Um, so what's really nice about it is it's very likely going to improve the performance of your dashboard and your worksheets and your filters and everything. Um, the only thing to look out for with it is that you are working with a snapshot of your data at a moment in time. So there's probably a, a good chance that you'll want to set up an extract refresh so that it's automatically updating every day, every week, every hour, you know, however often makes sense for your data. So we're going to cover all of that and more in today's video. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. So we know a little bit about what an extract is. Uh, now, how do we create an extract, okay? So there's a couple places to do that in Tableau Desktop. Uh, option number one is you could right-click on the name of your data source at the top of your data pane and select Extract Data. Another option would be if you go back to your Data Source tab, um, there's a button here where you can uh, tell Tableau you'd like to create an extract. There's an Edit button if you'd like to pull up your extract options. Um, now, the thing to know is that from your data source tab, it doesn't actually create an extract until you select a worksheet to navigate, uh, you know, back to a worksheet or, or a dashboard or something like that. Uh, my preferred method, I think, just because it's the way that I learned to do it, is to create it from within a worksheet itself. So I'll right click on the name of my data source and select extract data. It pulls up a whole bunch of options for us here. Okay. So first up, um, do we want to store the data as logical or physical tables? Now you'll notice that's not really uh, an available option for us to select. Uh, currently, I'm just connected to one table of data, so there's no join or relationship or anything. Uh, but the really simple way to think about this is a physical table would occur you know, after something like a join. Um, so in this case, uh, it would store, you know, if your data is duplicated as a result of your join, it would store it post-duplication, whereas the logical tables is going to store your tables as independent entities and then combine them later. Um, so a physical table might be a little bit bigger, possibly, um, just sort of depends. I don't have a hard and fast rule on this. I don't always do one or the other. It's situational, and sometimes I just experiment to see what makes the most sense. Okay, it's also the ability to add filters here. I suppose I should now show you the data source that we're working with. So uh, what I've done is I've taken this table of data from Baseball Reference. It's for the Seattle Mariners 2023 season. Y'all know me, if you followed the channel for a while, you know I'm a hopeless Seattle Mariners baseball fan, even though we pretty much stink. I grew up in the glory years of the 90s uh, when they were great, so I'm stuck with them. Uh, so what I've done is I've used an import HTML function to pull this data into Google Sheets. Um, I've done a video on using import functions in Google Sheets, so I'll drop a link to that in the description below if you're interested to learn more. Uh, but this is basically loading all the data from this table into Google Sheets, okay? So that's what I've got connected to here. Um, do I want to add a filter? Uh, yes, I do actually, because the thing about the way the table is stored on baseball reference is um, I think roughly every month there's like, it repeats the header values. Maybe it's not every month. I don't know how they break it up, but you can see the names of the columns are repeated over and over again. So I don't want those repeated column names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter. It's going to be based on the game number field. Okay, if it's a legitimate number, like one through 162, cool. I want that because that's gonna be one of the games throughout the year. Um, otherwise, I'm going to exclude the null value, okay? So if I say, okay, the null, uh, the null values is where it said game number and repeated the other headers because the game number field is formatted as an integer um, and the Tableau can't really convert this value into an integer, so it just made it null, okay. Next up, do I want to aggregate uh, my data? Not really, personally. Um, you know, the aggregation would be to allow you to roll the data up at the date level that you want. So if you wanted to say, roll my data up at a daily level or weekly or monthly. Uh, the thing about this is uh, you don't have a ton of control. So if you're like, oh, I want to average this measure and I want to sum that measure, 
you can't really say that. So I'd prefer to use a group by statement in SQL or an aggregate tool in Tableau Prep. Um, it, those are gonna be methods that will give you more control when aggregating your data. Next up, number of rows. Um, so you might be wondering in what situation would you not want to include all of your rows of data in an extract? And the number one reason I've seen people want to do this is, uh, let's say you're working with a really large table of data, like a hundred million rows. Um, even creating an extract of that table, the performance might not be optimal. Uh, so one option is, you know, I'm going to create an extract with only a million rows of data. Um, you do that, and then in that case, you can build all your worksheets and your dashboards. Yes, it's not your complete data source, but it's enough data to build. Then you come back later, update the extract to include all 100 million rows of data. Um, so that's one of the big reasons I've seen people use that. Okay. Uh, We'll come back to history in a moment. I do want to talk about hide all unused fields. Um, so you can see here, there's a number of different columns in this data source, and I'm only using a few of them for the sake of this worksheet that I've got here. So if I say hide all unused fields, any field that's not currently being used uh, will be hidden. So that could be a nice thing. Uh, in this case, because I've only got like 20 columns, I'd probably rather just manually hide the columns I don't need. But I've had situations working with clients where we've got over a thousand columns. And then in that case, I don't want to have to hand select 900 columns to hide. I'd rather hide all unused fields. Uh, if there's ever a, a field you're not sure about, like, ah, I'm not using it in a worksheet right now, but I feel like maybe I will down the road. My recommendation is just create an extra worksheet and just throw that field in there on rows or columns or detail. Uh, and then that way, when you hide all unused fields, it won't be hidden. Okay, so let's do hide all unused fields. And I want you to look at a few things over here. Uh, keep your eye on the data pane. Um, the, the number of columns is going to decrease significantly, and then also this little icon up here is going to change. So I say extract. Check this out. So I've only got a few fields left, and then I've gone from a single cylinder to a double cylinder with an arrow wrapping around it, indicating that um, our data source is no longer a direct connection, it's actually now an extract. Okay. Uh, so let's say that there was a field that I don't currently have in my data source, or I can't see it right now, but I want it. I'm like, oh no, I really wish I had the field opponent so I could see who were the Mariners playing on this day. All right, uh, so what I need to do is I'm gonna right click on the name of my data source and deselect use extract. So it's gonna send it back to a direct connection. I'm gonna hit the drop down and say show hidden fields. I'm going to hit the drop down on the opponent field and say unhide. And for now, let's just drop this on tooltip. So now if I hover over, I can see, okay, in game number 12, the Mariners scored nine runs and the Chicago Cubs scored uh, 14. Not very good day. All right, so now how do I go back to the extract? Uh, well, I can't use the existing extract, right? If I go back to use the old extract, that doesn't have the opponent field in it. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to right click and instead what I need to do is actually need to remove the extract and recreate it. So I'll go to the extract breakout menu. I'm going to say remove. It's going to say, what do you want to remove? I'm going to remove the extract and delete the file. And now I'm going to go back and create a new extract because there's a column that didn't exist that now does, right? And then this is, I need to re-add that rule about exclude the null values in the game number columns. Um, I don't think I did this before, but, uh, I think I actually missed this, so it's actually good we came back in here. An incremental refresh, if I choose a field which would allow for incremental refreshes, then when we publish this extract to Tableau Server later on, I will have the option to say, do a full refresh, basically you know, dump the old file, create an entirely new one, or keep the existing file and just append new rows of data to the bottom of it. So usually something like a row number or a date field is a great field to reference for an incremental refresh. In this case, it's not gonna work very well for my situation, unfortunately, um, because you can see that a bunch of games that haven't occurred yet are all preloaded into this table. Now, if a game only showed up after it finished, then the game number field would be a great one because then I could just say, oh, okay, you know, when you see a new game number, that's gonna get appended to the bottom of the existing table. Okay, so I'll add it there just so we can see it in the options later on, but I'm not probably gonna set up an incremental refresh with this. So I'm gonna select extract, gonna create it again. Um, this time, 
yeah, this time the opponent field is now there. That's cool. Okay, uh, so now we've created an extract. Uh, if we ever want to refresh this, a quick way of doing that would just be to right click on the name of my data source. This is a little confusing. You don't want to hit the top refresh, that second button from the top, that's for direct connections. I want to go to the extract breakout and then you can see here, I've got options to do either a full or an incremental refresh. So if I think this table data is updated, let's say I open this up tomorrow and the Mariners have played another game, I say full refresh, hey, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, that's fine, it's gonna do its thing. So that's how you would update an extract on Tableau Desktop. Um, now you can set up automatic refreshes on Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud, and we'll look at how to do that. Okay, uh, when I go to publish my work, I've got two options. I could just publish the extract on its own. So I could right click on the name of my data source and just say publish to server. Or I, if I was going to the server dropdown, I could just publish the entire workbook. So I guess the question there is, do you think you will use this extract for other projects? If yes, then maybe you want to publish the data source as its own, you know, standalone entity. If not, if it's only going to support this project, then it doesn't really matter. It's probably fine just to publish the workbook and have the extract get published with the workbook. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select publish workbook. Uh, I'm probably not really going to change anything. Default project, that's fine. Extract data source, that's fine. Sheets, I don't care. Everything is fine. Permissions, I think that's fine. Data sources. Um, that, this actually is kind of a big deal. So in this case, um, I, I want the data source embedded in the workbook. Publish separately would publish the workbook and the data source as their own thing. So kind of a two for one, I guess. Uh, but then I also need to embed... Um, embed the password. So in this case, if I want, you know, whether it's a SQL table or a Google sheet or whatever it is, I need to embed um, the password so that it can, when I, when it goes to automatically refresh, it has the credentials it needs to be able to do that. I actually don't know what the difference is between embed my email versus embed the password. So not sure. Um, whatever, show sheets is tabs, that's fine. Oh, it doesn't support embedded password. Sick. Okay, let me switch to this one then. Okay, I think is that I think this is just a Google Sheets thing. In in SQL, you'd have the option to embed the password. So, all right, hopefully I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is select publish. It's doing its thing. It's publishing to Tableau Server, or in this case Tableau Cloud. All right. Here we are. Okay, so all my work is published, and then if I go to this data sources tab here. This is where, let me hit this drop down here and I'm gonna edit the connection. Um, that's not where you go to refresh it. Let me think about this for a second. Oh, extract refreshes. Duh. Okay, so I go to the extract refreshes tab and I'm gonna select new extract refresh. And then this is where I can come up with the options I want. So do I want full refreshes? Do I want incremental? You could actually do both. You could do a full refresh every week and an incremental refresh every day. Um, just sort of depends on what you need, um, what's going to make the most sense for your data. You probably want to talk to your server administrator to make sure you're not scheduling too many jobs and overloading the server. But in this case, I could say something like, hey, I want a full refresh every day at, I don't know, let's say 7 a.m. So when I wake up and get going for work, um, then my data's updated. I can see how the Mariners did the night before, right? And then I, this is a little bit of a new interface for me. Some of this has been a little bit updated, uh, but now I have the ability to say like, what days should this happen? So maybe I'm like, you know, I don't really need this on uh, Fridays because the Mariners don't play a lot of Thursday games as an example, okay? Um, cool, so that's a little bit about how to set up a refresh. Uh, so let me, I'll probably delete this later, but let me go ahead and create that. So there's a full refresh. And then maybe I say, I need an incre incremental refresh every, every hour. So then I create that. So now you can see I've got both a full and incremental refresh. Uh, let me delete these before I forget because I don't actually really want these running on my server all the time. It's just for the sake of example. All right, so flipping back here. Uh, you know, one other thing I could think to cover with you is where does an extract file go? So if you create this, Tableau is creating a .hyper extract file. Now, I currently, the example I'm showing you is a Tableau package workbook, a TWBX. In a package workbook, you have both your visuals and your data source, and they're packaged together into a single file. Um, so that means if I right click on the name of my extract and go to um, extract breakout and then properties, it's going to tell me where this lives, and it's going to live somewhere kind of random, like this whole Tableau temp file path, because it's a 
part of the packaged workbook. That's where it saved it. However, if you were if you hadn't saved your Tableau workbook yet, or if you're working in a TWB, when you create the extract, it's actually going to prompt you and ask you where do you want to save this file, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So a couple other things in this little extract breakout menu. Um, if you go to history, this will also tell you the last time that you updated it locally. Um, so I can see the last time I ran this extract was four minutes ago, nine five minutes ago, nine thirty eight a.m. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good background uh, into Tableau Extracts. I would say personally, I probably use Extracts in at least 80% of my projects, if not more, um, because they are a really nice way of making your entire workbook more efficient. Um, so thank you so much uh, for checking this out. Uh, if you check out this info button up here in the top corner, uh, we run Tableau classes every month, um, everything from Tableau prep, to beginner calculations, advanced calculations, the basics, the intermediates of Tableau desktop. Um, we really firmly believe that nobody should have to be on their Tableau journey alone. And so we host classes to be able to help people. Uh, of course, we also drop free content here on YouTube every single week, and we'd love for you, for you to follow us here as well. Um, so thank you so much for checking out this video on extracts. Please do let me know if you have questions, and we hope to catch you on another video here really soon. Thanks.